all the pink buttons are preset buttons. Over here, I can recall a preset. If I press this button, you see it's zooming in on the car. If I press the second button, it's zooming in on something else, the color chart. In fact, this preset can be recalled from the other controllers as well. So this button is a focus button. These values are synchronous. I am changing the absolute focus position of the camera and you see it doesn't matter if I do it on the one or the other controller, it is going to be the same. Skyhoy's universal controllers, they offer you unseen flexibility in the form factor you can choose and the price without compromising on any of your control options. And the same software system called Reactor is used on any of these controllers. Tactile control is, is really important in visual life production environments. Your eyes need to be fixed on the screen in front of you or on a stage and your fingers, they must be able to feel their way to the controls underneath. And Skyhoy controllers is all about that. We have no touch screens. You can feel the key right under your fingertips all the time. The universal nature of Skyhoy controllers will also let you add any brand of camera to your controller without a blink. It's super easy with Blue Pill and Reactor. And that is without sacrificing any of those close-knit integrations that the individual brands have. And another thing is tally colors for your camera selector. They can be picked up from external systems such as video switches or routers or via TSL. So you have information about which camera is live and which is on preview. In front of me, we have three Skyhoy controllers, small, medium, large, classics really. This is PVC Fly, PVC Pro, PVC Extreme. We've had these for a while. We now have them in two versions. We have the Blue Pill Inside version and we also have the Unisketch version. So this is just top-notch modern technology and we have sprinkled even more power on top because the Blue Pill platform with the Reactor software, this is what we'll be looking at today, Regardless of whether you have a Unisketch or a Blue Pill Inside version, you get the same flexibility and power that I'm going to show you today. If you have it with the Blue Pill Inside, it means that the Blue Pill has moved inside the controller. What it actually also means is that you have uh, some options which are not available to you anymore because Unisketch has certain features, Blue Pill has certain other features. The beauty of it is that Blue Pill is available to both of these platforms in the Skyhoy universe. I want to let you see how these controllers are similar and different. And the similarities is how many of the same control options are really available on both PVC Extreme and PVC Pro and PVC Fly. So now let's first look at uh, what we have here. On all of the controllers, you'll find a camera selector. This is the camera selector where you select the camera. And we have the same over here on the PVC Pro and on the PVC Fly. They also all have a joystick. A joystick is a mechanism that allows you when you tilt it to the sides to operate typically a robotic camera. You can also map it to other things, but in our world, robotic camera control is very often what you do with it. If you push it up, then you'll tilt the camera and you can tilt it down again. If you rotate the top of the joystick, you zoom. We can't see that so easily, but you can see it on the picture here. Now, look at this. I can use any of these controllers to work with that camera over there. So it's really, I could also do contradicting things. <laughs> so funny. Now, um, this is, you know, joysticks on all of these. That's another similarity. We have a button on the top of the joystick and actually what that does is it brings the home menu up here. I don't think you saw any difference because we are already on the home screen. So that's the menu system that we'll get back to in a moment. On the PC Extreme, you have a zoom rocker, you have an iris wheel and a focus wheel. The idea really is that you have a two-hand operation over here. So if you, for convenience or your habits or whatever, do not want to use this, the rotation of the joystick. You can use the zoom rocker to zoom in or zoom out. And that's really a preference thing because it's redundant with what you do up here. Now, of course, there is actually cases where if you have a PC camera on a slider or something else with a, a fourth axis, then you could assign this to the fourth axis. So that kind of flexibility exists because our software is powerful enough to let you change it. But um, that, that's a special for PDC Extreme over here, assuming also that you really want to do manual focus with your thumb where you can roll this wheel to do that. The next thing we'll look at is preset control. All the pink buttons are preset buttons. 
Over here, I can recall a preset. If I press this button, you see it's zooming in on the car. If I press the second button, it's zooming in on something else, the color chart. In fact, this preset can be recalled from the other controllers as well. So you will see, of course, they are shared. Why? Because the presets are stored in the camera over here. On the PC Fly presets are on the camera selector row. We are sharing that row of buttons by toggling forth and back between camera selector, preset selection, camera selection, preset. And if I press the sides, I am cycling forth and back between the available presets to me. We have up to 20 presets here. Same thing on the PC Pro, but now you can notice one of the differences between PC Fly and Pro because they have basically the same features. On PC Pro, you have direct access to them. So menu navigation is happening on the upper edge on this key where we are cycling through menus here. Menu navigation on PTC Pro happens by specifically pressing buttons in the menu section, and that will bring you to different pages. Over here, if you want access to presets, it's toggling between presets and camera selection. Here, it is a direct choice by pressing these buttons, and if you want a page, you have buttons here to go forth and back. It's the same on the PTC Extreme. There you have buttons, uh, 10 preset recall buttons directly here, and you have a paging key here and a return key. So you can have multiple pages of presets, but again, they are directly available to you over here. There's one thing about presets which is pretty cool, and that is the ability to use the labels in the displays for describing the presets. And to leverage that on the PTC Pro, where by default we have the camera selector in the bottom, we can actually swap those rows. So if we press and hold this key, you will see that the presets now enter to the lower row and we can cycle between the pages here on this button. Up here, we now have the camera selector. So that's basically for you to determine whether you want camera selector or presets, the one on the other place. So that's one of the super cool features about the, the PTC Pro. About the paging, if we had more than just two cameras added, and in fact, we only have one today because the second camera, a CRN300, is in fact not connected. It's just here to let you know that we support both of those two wonderful Canon models. Uh, so it's the CRN500 we are working on here. Had we had many more cameras, it would be possible to page to the next page of cameras by buttons on all of these controllers as well. And yes, we can actually manage many, many, many cameras from the same controller, no problems at all. So um, it's, uh, and, and that's by the way, one of the other benefits of the Blue Pill platform. You'll find that it's more powerful simply. There are limitations on Unisketch that may make you want to buy a Blue Pill and combine that with your Unisketch controller, like you see me do right now, because you get more power out of using the blue pill to talk to your cameras and let the Unisketch controller talk to the blue pill. And that's the setup that we are demonstrating here today. What we need to do now is to look at the menus. So menus are basically what we find here. We have six buttons and a shift key that allows us access, if we press and hold it down, to additional menu buttons in uh, this complex of buttons up here. We have basically 12 menus we could access like that. Over here, we have um, specifically keys to access the various menus. And then we have also a uh, cycling button that will basically cycle you through, especially if there is a configuration that has more than seven, eight direct uh, menus to, to access, it can be useful to cycle to the last ones. And on the PDC Fly, basically you are pressing the upper edge. So if you wanna see what is in the menus, the secret is that on these two controllers, it's the same. On this one, it's slightly different. One of the differences you find if you count the amount of um, knobs on these controllers is that we have four encoder knobs on the PTC Fly. There's also four encoder knobs on the PTC Pro, plus one extra, and this extra encoder knob is for focus. And over here, you have eight knobs. We have divided this conceptually into configurations that are called standard class and pro class. And the pro class configuration for this camera basically has the same structure and features that you'll also find on an RCP. While the standard class configuration over here will be shared between the PTC Pro and PTC Fly and also our Color Fly controller and MKA2, which is an accessory module to our mega panel that turns out to be super useful for PTC control as well. I would like to invite you to watch the video we have on MKA2 using um, the color screens in it 
for preset thumbnails. That's really, really awesome. You should definitely check it out because it's such a value add that you just can't miss it. Now, uh, let's look at the menus. In this one, by the way, if I press the top button, then I'm always coming back to my home menu. That's a super nice feature to know about. Otherwise, these uh, display tiles here will show the same on these two controllers, namely that we have a full auto joystick sensitivity, we have a focus speed and uh, also focus position uh, up here on this controller. So if I uh, change it to manual mode, you'll see all the places it's changing to manual. If I change the joystick speed, it's only for this controller. So joystick speed is individual. And by the way, if I press this hard to the side, it's really low speed. If I do the same with the PTC Pro, it's gonna be much quicker because it's still on 10. Let's cycle through the menu. Then we have auto iris, we have f-stop uh, for iris and shutter speed. Um, Automatic exposure gamma limit is the final one here. That's actually what we uh, find on one of these. Let me just see if I can find that mode uh, somewhere here. We will have it uh, on the exposure screen. If we move on to the next one, then we have white balance and it's right here. So you see these are the same. And if I change it down here, it's changing up there because they are talking to the same camera. I can change the white balance mode uh, to a number of different uh, settings here, tungsten, Kelvin, degrees, and so on. So let's just try to paint the camera a little bit here. We should see some changes with the um, white balance of the camera as I'm turning this knob, and we do. These buttons, red and blue gain, are actually shifts, so these will offset the white balance from its neutral point, neutral being what um, 4650 Kelvin is, and the same is true for the blue here. So there you can sort of uh, sh yeah, shift it, offset it from its uh, center point. Moving on to the next menu, or maybe I should do it up here. So we have seen um, the um, white balance level. Then we have black gamma, black point, black range. We have over here a focus mode from auto and um, we can change it into manual. So let's check that out. So this button is a focus button and you can see as I'm turning it, I am bringing the image out of focus at the moment and I could of course bring it back again. You see the uh, focus position is shown in the display and notice another thing, this display, by the way, that would be available over here as well. And once again, these values are synchronous. I am changing the absolute focus position of the camera and you see it doesn't matter if I do it on the one or the other controller, it is going to be the same. I can also do it in coarser steps, but be careful because it is really gonna be coarse steps to bring you quickly from one end to the other. And it takes a little bit of time for the camera to do so. So I definitely suggest that you work with it on the fine mode here. So let's just get it into focus. But the thing I wanted you to notice is that our controllers are smart enough to realize that a parameter is not available. So if I turn it into full auto mode once again, no, sorry, it's not that one. If I turn the focus mode into auto, you see how the parameter becomes unavailable by a little symbol that indicates that I can't change it anymore. That's a part of our integration work. We go a fairly long way to make sure the integrations are clever enough to understand the cameras we're working with. A lot of research and development time goes into that. And that's what you can expect from us going for the extreme integration and the tight integration with these uh, products. On the PTC Extreme, um, we basically have also this sort of same menus, but you can see we have more direct access to the things that we want to adjust. So uh, going through these menus shows that, yes, we do also have white balance. We have exposure related settings, but we may have more of them than was found on these standard class configurations. If we go uh, through these menus, that's basically what you see all along. We also have matrix, color matrix adjustments we can perform here, and they are not found on the standard class configuration. So that is basically because the pro class controllers, they have more knobs for adjustments. We feel it's justified to provide more out of the box functionality, assuming once again that people with the PTC Extreme and an RCP uh, professionals that appreciate having access to the color matrix adjustments. It's not that you can't have it on the standard class, it's just that we consider that the majority of users of these controllers are unlikely to want to have color matrix functions and especially on as few knobs as only four. So that's one way that we have distinguished these two classes of controllers, the pro class and the standard class. In any case, in Reactor it is possible to customize it's um, not necessarily what you want to do on your first day with your Skyhawk controller, but it's possible. So we usually do not keep you from doing things, 
But we also put a lot of effort into giving you the right default out of the box experiences. On the PC uh, Extreme, we have um, features such as um, focus, one shot, push over here. So actually, if we bring it out of focus, and let's just bring it into manual once again, and we bring it out of focus. Oh, I could use the focus wheel here to do that. So you see with my thumb, yeah, I can focus the camera or defocus it. Now I can push this one push focus button up there, and it gets into focus once again. Uh, you see how we also have execute white balance A and B banks. So if I go into into that mode and I change it over to uh, white balance A and I press this one, then we'll see it is executing white balance A on the controller. Um, I may want to basically shift these into place. And maybe I really need to see if I can find something that offsets it a little bit. So we have a more unusual white balance coming out of that. So let's just try to set it here. Let's try to zoom out a little bit and see if the combined setting here will allow us for a different white balance. Yes, we see a little bit of a change in the picture, but generally the camera was pretty spot on already. But that's basically how you have those direct access buttons here, while if you go over here, it's hidden on this encoder, where if you go between bank 1, A and B, then you will have the knob also change between A and B. Pretty clever, actually. It's uh, one way to pack a lot of stuff into a single configuration. As you will also see, it basically disappears if we have other white balance modes that doesn't require it, and it changes all the way over to Kelvin if you are in the Kelvin mode. Yes. I could go on and on and on about that. And one of the points on this video is basically to give you an idea about how these controllers are different. It's the same things, but you have more or less buttons that gives you more or less direct access. They have different price points, obviously. And to some extent, you also have a different focus on this one being for the more demanding broadcast professional while these controllers are um, still very powerful, but also designed to be less intimidating like the PTC Fly, which is one of the favorites you guys have out there. Before we end this video, I would love to show you how we can set all of this up from the beginning, because it's actually quite easy. And for that, I want to focus over on Reactor. So Reactor is um, this software that currently manages these panels. And I told you that you can either have them with blue pill inside, which is not the case of any of these. These are all Unisketch controllers, and they are connected to the same blue pill. So the, there's a single blue pill that is managing these three controllers right now separately. So that's one of the powers blue pill can stand up to. I, um, I, th I think we'll just create a new project, basically. So instead of uh, changing the existing, let's just go here, create a new project, and call it Video Demo. So by doing so, and just go ahead with the standard uh, settings here, we basically get a completely new blank product for the blue pill. And what we, you, you see the panels are all losing connections now. They are just waiting for blue pill. And um, I am then adding panels basically by searching on my network. And now, uh, since uh, I have a lot of Skahoy controllers around, so I need to pick the right ones. And let's just see if the P6 stream might be this guy. Uh, it turned out to be. Otherwise, I could press here and identify the panel after having added it, and it turns out to be the right one. Let's just add another panel. So PDC Pro V2, this guy. Let's add that. And if it connects now, yes, it was the right one. And then finally, let's find the PDC Fly panel right here. And we are good. Now, selecting these controllers means that Reactor already suggests a configuration that will make sense for us. We have a few options. We can entirely remove it. We also have variations. Like if, for instance, we had a frame shot controller we wanted to use along with the PTC Extreme, we could do that by selecting this configuration. Uh, if, if we did it, it means that it's basically saying, hey, uh, pick your frame shot controller, and then you add it up, and then you will have a sidekick frame shot controller that gives you visual thumbnails. Pretty awesome, but today we'll just bring it back into the configuration for generic PTC control. Next up would be to select our cameras. And you see we lost the Canon, um, Canon camera here. So we'll just press the Add button. Then uh, we'll see if it appears in our search here on the network. And if it doesn't, and that's sometimes the case with some cameras, then you will have to go to the Add Manual, and we'll search for CRN500. 
and uh, I am so lucky I know the IP address of this guy, so I'll just click over here and type that address in real quick and press save. So what happens now is that it will connect to the camera. It's online and you see on the camera selector of the Peep's Extreme, there we have the Canon camera and I can move the camera. So that's how quick you can really do this. On this blue pill, I now need to do exactly the same for the other two, but because this device is already added, I can basically take it from my device collection and say, okay, select on this one and voila, there you have it on the second controller. And then finally on this one, I can do exactly the same. Just pick the already existingly installed camera and there we go, having it here on the PC fly. So that's how you can quickly add these um, controllers to your reactor configuration. Then the question is, how do you get your Unisketch controller into a mode where it can be discovered by Reactor? And that's also really simple. If you just want to do it for really quick testing or interaction with your blue pill, then during boot, as you see the color animation screen, you press and hold the lower left corner key on your controller and uh, you basically press it twice when you see the call animation and it's getting into blue pill mode. And if you then do that once again, as you are rebooting your controller, when the call animation comes up, you double tap that lower left corner key, it is exiting blue pill mode. In blue pill mode, it means that it's not trying to connect to whatever else you had it set up to do in Unisketch. It's just waiting for blue pill, a blue pill to connect to it, for reactor to connect to it. And, um, and that, that's a very quick way to shift in and out of it. It does require DHCP, so that has to be available, otherwise it won't work. And finally, if you are on uh, using Blue Pill on a fixed basis with your Unisketch products, we strongly invite you to actually install a raw panel configuration for Blue Pill. Many of our controllers have it already, but it's essentially the raw panel configuration combined with server mode and blue pill ready being flags that you set in the configuration. So that's all really simple to use your Unisketch panels with both blue pill and Unisketch related device cores. So you're really all set to go. We hope you enjoyed this video that you uh, will also subscribe to our social media channels, follow us on YouTube to make sure you stay informed about all the new stuff we are pushing out. There's going to be a lot of device cores and new development on the Blue Pill platform. And uh, if you're one of those lucky owners of the Blue Pill, you want to stay tuned on what's next.